Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is the 2022 annual Website Security Threat Report webinar presented to you uh, by Sukuri and GoDaddy. We're going to be looking at the trends in the website security landscape that we observed over the course of last year. Of course, if you want to read the full report, you can find that at www.sukuri.net. I will be your presenter today. My name is Ben Martin and I've been with Sukuri since 2013. I'm a security analyst and researcher, and I hail from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And I'm also a frequent contributor to the blog and was a contributor to the threat report. So we hope you enjoy, and let's get started with some of the key takeaways from the 2022 report. The three main malware campaigns, or rather the most uh, prominent and aggressive campaigns that we noticed over the course of the year were very similar to previous years. That is Sock Ghoulish, the Balada Injector, and Japanese SEO spam. We also, uh, and we will be going into further detail on all three of those uh, later on in the presentation here. Uh, Magecart attacks were also, uh, saw some very interesting developments within uh, that particular type of infection of, of credit card theft malware. And we noticed that overwhelmingly WordPress websites using WooCommerce are among the most common victims of this sort of malware. And again, we're going to go into those uh, details in a little bit uh, here in this presentation. Nearly half of all infected websites contain some form of SEO spam, uh, which of course is a major nuisance for website owners. Uh, the most single common website signature, uh, or rather single type of malware was HT access malware, which creates malicious allow and deny rules. Uh, this is a major pain of a type of infection to remove, and it's closely related to the Japanese SEO spam attack. Uh, this malware, malware is also frequently paired with malicious processes running within the environment that immediately reinfects the, the malware and the files uh, as soon as you try to clean it. So it's a major nuisance if your website is impacted by this uh, type of infection. And uh, also nearly 70% of infected websites contain some sort of uh, backdoor. Backdoors are almost par for the course with um, most malware infections because it allows the attackers to reinfect the environment even after you've changed your passwords. So if you're a regular website owner and you're trying to clean up your environment, you need to make sure to get rid of all of the backdoors that the attackers planted uh, within the website. And also, uh, furthermore, nearly one third of databases which contained malware uh, did contain a malicious administrator user. This is in a sense, uh, a different type of backdoor within an environment because it still allows the attackers backend access and allows them to reinfect the environment, again, even after you've removed the malware and the payload from the website. So let's go through uh, each of these key points and kind of extrapolate on them a little bit. We're gonna start first with the software distribution of our clients. Keep in mind, uh, this does not represent uh, the software distribution of the web as a whole and only uh, pertains to uh, our clients and the infected websites that we dealt with over the course of the year. Of course, we can see that WordPress is overwhelmingly the most common CMS platform uh, platform in use by our clients. At 96.2% of infected websites that we dealt with using WordPress, it is by far the most common. Now, keep in mind, this is not to suggest that WordPress is any less secure than any other CMS platform. It is simply the most popular in use among website owners, and so it's a larger target for the attackers. Uh, conversely, um, platforms like Joomla, Magento, and Drupal have uh, continued their very slight uh, decline in terms of prominence uh, across the, the clients that we've worked with over the years, and WordPress continues to inch upwards as the overwhelmingly most popular CMS that, the, that they use. Um, <clears throat> very similar to previous years, uh, roughly half of all uh, infected websites contained out-of-date CMS at the point of infection. So we can say that uh, conversely, uh, half of all websites, infected websites that we worked with over the course of the year had a fully patched CMS uh, uh, software in use. So it's only slightly an indicator of, of risk. It does uh, out of date CMS. Obviously, you'll want to keep things patched and up to date as much as possible. But there are a lot of other things that pose uh, a, a greater attack surface than just out of date core files. And that includes uh, software plugins and themes and other components as well. 
And on that topic, the top three uh, vulnerable software components that we observed over the course of 2022 were Contact Form 7, Freemius Library Components, and WooCommerce. Now, of course, those three pieces of software are safe to use if they're fully patched and up to date. So just make sure that you're that you're keeping uh, that you have a good security posture and that you're keeping your website up to date and patched in order to decrease the potential attack service uh, for attackers to gain a foothold in your environment. This is uh, this is also the second year in a row that Contact Form 7 topped the list in terms of the proportion of out of date and vulnerable software that we identified. Next, let's take a closer look at some of the malware families and campaigns that we noticed over the course of the year. These numbers are pretty similar to uh, previous years with malware and backdoors being by far the, the two most common types of infections. Now you'll notice a little bit of a percentage overlap here, and that's because uh, when we scan websites, uh, very rarely is there only one type of, of, of malware or, or backdoor within the environment. Usually there is both malware and a backdoor or SEO spam and a backdoor or phishing and a backdoor. Uh, and so there's a little bit of an overlap there. Uh, in comparison to previous years, both malware and backdoors increased slightly uh, in, in prominence and SEO spam decreased just a little bit but they're mostly consistent with previous years and the proportion of, of, of nasty software that we've observed in infected environments. Now, in terms of other types of malware that we see here, like hack tools, phishing, defacements, and mailers, they're roughly on par with previous years, and we haven't seen any major shifts in the proportion of those types of malwares uh, when compared to those. Let's take a look at the some of the most uh, interesting and common malware campaigns that we observed, the first of which we've called the Balada Injector. This is malware that goes all the way back to 2017, and it is a very aggressive malware campaign uh, done by threat actors who are aggressively exploiting uh, old and new vulnerabilities within software components. So this is often known as the human verification redirect scam. So what the malware does is it redirects uh, visitors to a website to uh, fake scam pages, which uh, ask you to click to verify that you're a human. But what it actually is, is a drive-by download, which tricks users into downloading things like spyware and adware and Trojans and other potentially unwanted programs within uh, onto your workstations. <clears throat> so. This malware is very aggressive. It's been around since 2017, and it's probably infected over a million websites by now, based on our numbers. Uh, and this malware often makes use of the same types of, um, of obfuscation within their code. The next is Salt Ghoulish. Salt Ghoulish malware gained a lot of notoriety uh, among other security companies in recent years, although we've been tracking this for quite a few years before that. Um, this is more commonly known as the fake browser update uh, malware, and it is uh, commonly the first stage in targeted ransomware infections that affect endpoint workstations, even ones in corporate environments. So essentially, uh, these are drive-by downloads which trick the user into downloading a fake Google Chrome update, which is actually a, re a remote access Trojan. So. Uh, as uh, you know, end users, make sure that you're only installing software and updates from the official source. Um, this has this is pretty notorious malware that's been going on for a very long time. And not only is it one of the most common um, types of infections, but it's also one of the most severe in terms of its consequences. Uh, it over the course of 22, uh, 2022, it took a few different forms including for a while, uh, it was floating around as a fake Cloudflare um, human ident verification uh, pop-up, but it sort of eventually morphed back into the regular old JavaScript injections that we've seen for years. And credit card skimmers. Uh, there was actually some very interesting developments uh, in this year or in 2022 and, and the previous couple of years, which has been a major shift in uh, the landscape for, for mage card, credit card theft malware. Um, in terms of actual just big picture numbers, credit card skimmers don't impact as nearly as many websites as other things such as SEO spam. However, the consequences for this type of malware can be very dire for website owners. Uh, E-commerce website um, administrators can pay 
thousands of dollars in fines to companies like Visa if they have a credit card skimming attack on their website left unattended for too long. So this type of malware is usually called MageCart, and that's because it originated on the CMS platform Magento, which is a dedicated e-commerce platform. However, since the uh, end of 2019, we've noticed that a lot of the malware that was originally intended for Magento environments has been repurposed to affect WordPress websites that use WooCommerce. To the point now in uh, looking at our data from 2022, WooCommerce is overwhelmingly what uh, MageCart malware impacts. Um, and we can see this uh, demonstrated with the file names and paths uh, on this chart on the right. So we see that uh, the top uh, four uh, file paths for MageCart infections are all WordPress. Uh, we can also see that, you know, through this mage.php file and some of the other ones listed here that Magento is certainly still represented and still targeted by attackers. But at this point in time, uh, WooCommerce uh, WordPress websites eclipse Magento in terms of just the, the general sheer number of credit card skimmers that we find in these infected environments. Um, <clears throat> interestingly, you can also see that overwhelmingly, um, credit card skimming malware affects PHP files rather than JavaScript. Uh, we still see JavaScript infections, of course, but it's overwhelmingly PHP uh, at this point, which will make a really big difference for other security researchers that are investigating MageCart infections because these PHP uh, files, they're not externally viewable. You cannot use them, view them in your browser. So this is gonna have uh, a really huge impact on, on other MageCart researchers looking into these types of infections. Next, let's take a look at uh, the distribution of backdoors that we've identified within compromised environments. So again, um, you know, over two thirds of infected websites contained a backdoor. Uh, and also that, inc that number will increase if you also consider malicious administrator users to be backdoors, which they essentially are. Uh, the top three most common types of backdoors that we observed in infected environments were remote code execution backdoors, web shells, and uploaders. Remote code execution backdoors are very popular among attackers because it gives them a lot of control and leeway over uh, their ability to um, infect environments and, and it gives them a lot of control over what they can do when they gain a foothold in an, in an environment. Uh, similar to web shells as, as well, it gives them a lot of control. Uh, a web shell will give the attackers pretty much full control over the file system, the databases, and even processes running within the environment, which can cause very aggressive infections that can be very difficult to deal with. And of course, good old fashioned uploaders allow attackers to upload other types of malware like phishing pages and other sorts of things. Uh, it's also very common for attackers to put backdoors into kind of random or obscure file paths. So if you're just a regular website administrator that's trying to deal with an infection, it can be very tricky because uh, attackers can sometimes upload hundreds of backdoors into an environment. And if you miss one of them, then they'll be back and they'll reinfect the environment. So it can be very, very cumbersome and very challenging for average website owners to deal with uh, a website infection in a thorough manner. Um, that's also kind of a testament to the importance of uh, having good file integrity monitoring and having a good security posture in general when you're operating a website. Let's next take a look at SEO spam. So this was the third most common infection overall and over half a million websites uh, was were identified with having an SEO spam infection by our site check tool over the course of the year. Uh, in fact, just about half of all infected websites contain some sort of spam. Uh, spam infections, of course, aren't as uh, devastating as a credit card skimming attack, for example, but they're still a massive nuisance for website owners, especially if you're concerned about your SEO as a website admin. Uh, if Google finds uh, spam on your website. It can be devastating for your search results and for your SEO rankings. And so it's very important to have a good security posture and prevent the attackers from affecting your website with one of these infections. 
Uh, doorways in particular were very common. Uh, doorways will pollute your uh, Google search engine rankings with thousands or tens of thousands of, of spammy links, and it can be a major nuisance to get rid of those. In fact, uh, websites affected by SEO spam infections, it can take weeks or longer to fully clean your search results of all these spammy results. So it's uh, a nuisance to, to say the least. And uh, the types of spam infections that we saw, or rather the, uh, I guess, keywords that they're, that they're trying to rank for are pretty much the same as they've always been. <clears throat> um, fake or knockoff pharmaceutical products, essay writing service, uh, services, knockoff luxury goods, even uh, cracked software and, and others. Uh, we, we see the same stuff over and over. It's, that's basically unchanged from, from previous years. And what is a website threat report without a special mention of phishing? Uh, the, the bane of, uh, of, of web surfers, um, it wasn't a, in terms of absolute numbers, it wasn't um, hugely common, but it was still about one out of every 10 infected websites had some sort of phishing on them. Uh, phishing, of course, is uh, fake uh, login pages uh, created by attackers with the intention of stealing credentials. And the most common types of phishing pages that we saw were for Netflix, uh, Discover, Delta Airlines, Adobe, Microsoft, and of course, PayPal. Attackers will uh, use kind of pre-made, ready-made phishing kits that they distribute over you know wide numbers of websites. And if they can uh, hack uh, your cPanel, sometimes they'll actually make subdomains like chasebank.yourwebsite.com uh, to try to give a little bit more legitimacy to their to their malware. Um, of course, uh, if you're just a regular uh, web surfer or user, uh, you'll always just want to make sure that you're not falling for any social engineering attacks and be very cautious where you enter in your login credentials and just make sure that it's only on uh, the official websites. So uh, that about does it for the Threat Report webinar. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I want to uh, extend a special thank you to all of the other contributors to the 2022 Threat Report here at Sakuri. Uh, it was a, a great time working on this report. I always look forward to it uh, every year working on these now. Um, I think if you can take away one thing from this webinar or this Threat Report, uh, I would recommend that um, it be sort of reflecting on your own security posture, either as a website administrator or just a regular uh, internet user. Um, you know, we always have to be, nobody wants to deal with uh, security issues or malware, but it's just kind of a, a, a fact that it's out there and you need to be um, aware of it and have a good security posture and practice uh, defense in depth to try to take every opportunity and, and everything that you could possibly do to prevent attackers from infecting your website or, or your computer. Um, and I think it's also very important to remember that as website owners, uh, you're not just worrying about you and not just worrying about your website, but uh, you know, a, a malware infection on your website will impact your customers and it will impact your, your clients and the visitors to your website. So as website administrators, we have a, a responsibility to take security seriously. Um, and I guess as a, as a parting thought, I would suggest that you uh, enable auto updates, auto, uh, automatic updates on your website, um, put your site behind a firewall and add 2FA to your login page. Thanks for joining us.